Peace to the gods, the goddesses, the kings, the queens, and all the children of the Most High. This is Professor L, and once again, I come to drop the assignments and resurrect the consciousness of the gods. Today's topic is, is the Bible really the word of God? So let's go back to the beginning. If God is government, mind, ordinance, universal laws that flow through the mind to the body, department, the body, God, and the Bible, this book, is God's word, let's look at what it contains. It contains words. So, the question is, whose words? Whose words are actually in this book called the Bible? Now, many people say, oh, well, well, the Bible was inspired of God. Okay, I grant thee that. Basically, what you're saying is that the words in there contain a certain measure of wisdom that came from God. The question is, has man ever seen God? According to most, no. That leads to the question, therefore, does man truly know God? And if man has never seen God and may not necessarily truly know God, then how do you deem the Bible as being God's word? Let me break it down to you. What is a word? Word first begins with thought. Thought when expressed, becomes sound. Thought, when written, becomes written word. But word first begins with thought. Now, who gets thoughts? All living, breathing creatures, including humans. But humans represent the highest form of man, God, on the planet. It's a secret. Not many people are going to tell you. Research it. There's a reason why the Hasidic community, the Jews, as they call themselves, stack the letters Y-H-W-H -H on top of each other. Figure it out. So now word is thought. Man, the highest form on the earth, gets the thought and then he writes the word. First speak the word, then write the word. Therefore, this goes back to what people talk about. Well, the Bible is inspired. Okay, so now we know that man gets thoughts of God and then he writes the thoughts down. And then they decorate a book and call it God's Word. But let us go deeper. You see, you must understand it is necessary and crucial when you're understanding anything that's feeding your spirituality, especially if you truly want to resurrect your consciousness as a God. Never overlook the socio-political aspect of any so-called religious writing. This takes us back to the Bible, written in 1611, where, Europe, why, for whom? See where I'm going with this? 
You see, if you're going to resurrect your consciousness as a god, you got to do real research. Memorizing books or what somebody else said ain't doing a damn thing for you. Pardon my uh, expression, but it's not. You must study, study, study. As the prophet said, and study, 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 and show thyself approved, as the master said. It's all about science. And we are scientifically made. So one must come to know thyself. And when one knows thyself, they then become a master of sciences. Hello. This is where all this is leading to, you becoming a master of yourself. But first you must come to know thyself. And in the essence of knowing thyself, one should know the power of their word. Because the wisdom is evolving up within you. Especially if you're melanated. Resurrection of the gods. So therefore, word is thought, spoken, or written, placed in a book, in a specific time, specific geographical location, for a specific population. You see, if you don't add serious study to what you spiritually feed yourself, you ain't doing nothing for yourself. You are just grasping and memorizing words and you, for some reason, a lot of people think that this is pleasing to God, quoting a scripture. Do you have understanding of the scripture? <laughs> understanding is what lifts humanity. Quoting, child's play. Children can do that. Nothing more than a child's recitation. Very good, Bobby. Now sit down. And let the master speak. You see, you have to understand, when it says, in the beginning there was the word, in the beginning there was thoughts. Now who was housing these thoughts? Who were expressing these thoughts? There was only one group of people on the planet who was fluent in expressing the word, and that's the melanated people. So therefore, when you read the Bible, you're reading thoughts of the ancient melanated people. Thoughts that were cherished, thoughts that provoke wisdom, thoughts that cause growth in humanity. Now, and that's not to say that the entire Bible, you know, is uh, possibly presented as the holy righteous word. The wisdom is in there. The book itself is not holy. It is the wisdom that one achieves that causes ascension within them. This is holy. Holding the book, cherishing the book, carrying the book, reading it on the train and on the bus, sitting in the front row at the church with the book. None of that don't mean a damn thing. Why? Because first of all, you are the book. And all you're doing is decorating yourself. You're the book. You're the word. You're the essence of God. What's your word? Let's go back to the ancients. Before any book was written, man's word was his law. Rise up within him from his God. There were no books. When you seen a melanated individual standing there, his word was supposed to prove true. Why? Because your word shapes your environment. So if you lie, you're only lying to yourself. You're lying about what's in your environment when you know that your perception tells you otherwise. So therefore, man in his spoken word, that's law. You must understand, forget books. Before any books was written, there was man and his word. And if you go all the way back thousands of years, there was only one man on the planet. And that's the melanated man, the ancient ones, who were masses of documenting all wisdom that caused growth 
or as you would say, the word. So now when you come to this day, 1611, the Bible is written. Where is it written? Europe. For whom is it written? Who is it written about? North and South Americans, the Israelites. One particular group, the tribe of Judah, North America. You see, you gotta know all these things and you understand what this is all about. It's written about one group. It's written for another group. And then this group brings it back to you, telling you it's God's word when you don't realize you're God's word. I am of the ancients. My melanin goes all the way back to the beginning of time. Therefore, God's word is my melanin. God's word floats through my melanin. And with melanin, God's word has authority. Why? Because God's word comes up through melanin and then is expressed through my thought, my word, and what I write. So when you look at melanated man, you are looking at God's word. This is resurrection of the God's TV and I do not come to play. And once again, this is no slight to my fellow brothers and sisters. I know who you are. I know why you're here. And I have love for thee. But remember, when the ancients drop wisdom, we don't need no one's permission to speak. This is Professor L, and I don't come to play. You see, when the ancient masses spoke, their word was law. And when you understand your truth, no man can condemn your word. Because truth resonates on a high frequency, and high frequency overrules all lower frequencies. So if a person says, well, I don't agree with what you're saying. I feel that what you're saying is biased and it's racist. Mm, more power to you. <laughs> but your thought cannot defeat the power of my word. Everyone must know who they are. Because if you don't know who you are, it is impossible to resurrect your consciousness as a God. So, to sum it all up, in the beginning, there were no books. Man's word was the word of God. And man's word represents law within his universe. And this is particularly if you're melanated. This is Resurrection of the Gods TV. This is Professor L. I come to drop that science and I do not come to play. Peace to the gods, the goddesses, the kings, the queens, and all the children of the Most High. May we rise in wisdom and lift humanity. I'm out.